And guys do it every single day. Every day. They get her pregnant. They catch a disease. They align themselves with a woman that they was never supposed to be with in the first place, and she ruins his life. They do things that they're not supposed to do, expecting some kind of great result, and then they want to blame it on women at the same time not holding their own self accountable. Absolutely, she's supposed to be held accountable for, for, for what she did, but it's still your life, nigga. It's your life. So at the end of the day, I can hold as many women accountable as I want. But as long as you continue to simp out, as long as you continue to pick the women that you know ain't no good for you, what do you want me to do? I can't hold women accountable to your success for the rest of my life. Nigga, at some point, you're going to have to get your life together and stop making short-term decisions expecting long-term results. Because the long-term results is going to be suffering for you. We know what the results are with family court. Nigga, why you still getting chicks pregnant that you know is going to take you to family court? I'm an advocate for them to change the laws, but at some point, nigga, you got to have a level of dick discipline. I can't fix you. You got to fix you. And I'm giving you the blueprint of what it takes in order to be successful. You keep looking at me saying, oh, man, he found a unicorn. No, my nigga, I found my purpose and I lived in it. And she followed behind me, blindly, understanding that her benefit and the greatness of me was going to benefit her the most. And so when you see me tell these stories, let me tell you something, bro. And I was telling them a little bit of this on the Millionaire Morning Show this morning. I was giving my girl in 2008 when my daughter was born $25 in allowance. $25. That's it. That's all we had. We had a strict budget. We wasn't going to touch any of the money that we had stacked up as far as what it was that I was saving based off of what my OGs told me. They said, Anton, put 25% of everything that you make up. Pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. I said, okay. When the recession hit, we still had that nest egg. And if I had tapped into it, I wouldn't have been in any better a position had I tapped into it versus me going ahead and getting all of my cars repossessed. We went broke, broke. And when I say broke, broke, I'm talking about broke, broke. I'm talking about entertainment was going to rent DVDs for free at the library. Nigga, you ain't never rented nothing for free. Going to the library to rent DVDs, paying my tithes and offerings, 20%, not 10, 20%, 10% tithes, 10% offering, and then I was giving my chick $25 allowance and we was figuring that shit out. Eating grilled cheese sandwiches, trying to put a spin on ramen noodles. Spent our anniversary doing a picnic, not nigga, not because the picnics was fun. We wound up making it fun, but because that's what we had the ability to do based off of what our budget was talking about. That's what our life was like. But guess what? Throughout that moment of duress was the determining factor for whether or not we was going to be successful long term. Did we have the wherewithal to endure through it, not when we was going, when we was having a good time and jet setting everywhere, and I was 19, 18, 19, 20 years old, 21, 22 years old, making $120,000, $130,000 a year, and it was only in the early 2000s? No, that's easy. It's always easy when you up, and that's why women want to meet you at the finish line. That's easy to do. That's nothing. The successful part is whether or not you're going to respond to the duress aspect of it. So it's so easy for you to be able to walk away. And the number one reason why people walk away from their relationships, all of a sudden she can do better by her damn self. All of a sudden she got a whole another person and she can love herself through it. All of a sudden everything that y'all said that y'all abided by and y'all took those vows at the altar, they don't mean anything anymore. You know why? You know why? Is because you never had the conversation and started to evaluate what the threshold for pain was when it comes to being able to endure through the end. How long can he not have a job and you still going to hold him down? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. See, we're going to get to the thick of it. I'm not going to sit here and give you uh, some kind of observation based off of what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the God. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you the God given truth. Nobody sits here and have a conversation based off of what their threshold for pain is. Because all you see is an opportunity for growth. And so you want the euphoric moments, but he never told you. In order for you to grow, you got to get a little bit of dirt on you. You got to get a little bit of dirt on you. And that dirt going to be on you for a long time before you start to sprout. And even when you sprout, sometimes it's not going to just be straight up like that. 
Sometimes somebody going to have to pull you to the side in order for you to grow straight up and not to the corner. Because you might be growing in two different directions. Come on, man. Come on, man. You might be growing in two different directions because you guys are not perfectly aligned. You were never equally yoked. And the reason why y'all got together and the reason why y'all stayed together had nothing to do with the foundation of greatness within a relationship. It had everything to do with these superficial things. And so when y'all go, y'all go in two different directions. And even when y'all get through it, you never be able to see each other the same anymore because the only thing that you remember is how y'all responded to the rest. And so your threshold for pain, your threshold for endurance has everything to do with what your success level is going to be in your relationships. Not your love language, but your endurance. Because it's he who endures to the end. The race is never given to the swift. And we always see these people that change their relationship status and they taking pictures on Instagram and they change their relationship status on Facebook and then they got their TikToks together and they talking about, oh my God, he took me to Ruth Chris and he took me to Benny Hein Hein and he did all of this stuff and he sent flowers every single day and then all of a sudden they disappear. You know why? Because they never was able to sustain that because they threshold for what it is that they really wanted from that guy was revealed to them. And then all of a sudden he don't look the same no more because the picture that they painted in their head is based off of some fairy tale that Disney sold you instead of what it was that you was really supposed to be preparing yourself for so that you can then enjoy the fruits of your labor long term. But you never going to hold him down. You never had an intention of holding him down. You know why? Because you never went into your closet. You never started praying. You never got consecrated. You never started focus on who it is that you're supposed to be. You never told God to prepare you for what it is that he got for you. Only thing that you kept doing is asking God for a good man. Send me this. Send me that. Okay, he gave it to you. And now he just did you dirty. Or you thought that he did you dirty. But in reality, you was never prepared for what it was that God really had for you. And so you was just a run through. You was a speed bump for that nigga. That was supposed to be your husband. You passed up on the man that you were supposed to marry, not necessarily because you rejected him, but because you rejected you. <laughs> you rejected you. You never did the work in order to become the person that you were supposed to be to support that man in the spaces that he was going to. You can't hold a conversation with his constituents. You can't hold a conversation with his partner. You so busy being ghetto that you can't even remotely fathom the idea of coming into the room and it makes you nervous. And God is preparing him. He taking him through it in order to get him to it. He preparing him. He putting him in great spaces. He teaching him the lessons. This lesson over here, yeah, you're going you gonna to really understand that later. I can't tell you why you need to go through that lesson. You just need to go through it. And so he going through the pain. He going through the suffering. And he got his layoff. And he trying to figure it out. And he don't understand it. And he losing everything. And you can't wait to walk away and run into something else. And then when he becomes successful, you want to attach yourself to his greatness as though you had anything to do with it. You didn't. You slowed him down. You gave an extra year to him. You, you tacked on an extra year to his sentence like he was in prison. You know how a lot of these prisoners go to jail and they was only supposed to do 10 years, but they wind up doing 14 because they had to defend themselves. That's you. You the person that helped him tack on an extra four years to his prison sentence because you was not the person that he really thought that he got. You was not the submission. You was not the person that was living in your purpose. And you wasn't ready. You never dated yourself. You never understood what your threshold for pain was. You never really gave yourself a chance and an opportunity to grow with him because you didn't even you wasn't there with him when he was going through it. The whole time you was complaining about what he ain't doing for you when in reality he was trying to figure out how he can do it for you. Everything that most men do, and I'm not going to say all, but everything that most men do, they make the sacrifice for the people that surround them.